All right, this video is over polynomial division. First off, why do we divide? To understand polynomial division, we have to make sure we understand why do we divide. We divide to find factors. That's what division is all about, trying to help us find factors. So when I ask the question, why do we divide polynomials, guess what? The exact same answer, to find factors. That's our whole goal here is to find factors, because as you know, if we can find a factor, then you could also find zeros. So how do we know if we have found an official factor? Anytime you get a remainder of zero, when you do division, a remainder of zero, that means that you have a factor. So when you properly have a factor, when you know you did a problem correct and you know you have a factor, you must have got a remainder of zero. That's a big part of polynomial division. So let's just show an example, a basic example of division. 10 divided by 4. So this is the kind of the, um, you know, way that we write 10 divided by 4 now, but the old school way is using our division symbol here. So we say 4 goes into um, 10 two times, that's 8, 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract 10 minus 8 is 2, so that gives us a remainder of 2 because obviously 4 cannot go into 10. And here's how we could write that. We write that 10 is 4 times 2 plus 2. So the 4 is the divisor, 2 is the quotient, and 2 is the remainder. So we have divisor, quotient, remainder. So 4 times 2 is 8, 8 plus 2 makes the 10. Here's another one, 15 divided by 6. So we have 6 goes into 15 two times. 6 times 2 is 12. 15 minus 12 is a remainder of 3. 6 cannot go into 3 anymore. That's how we know that we have a remainder of 3. So our um, answer, 15, is equal to the divisor, 6, times the quotient 2, plus any remainder 3. So that is how we like to write our equations. We like to write our final answer as the answer, the number that we were asked about, 10 or 15, that's the number, is equal to the divisor times the quotient plus any remainder. Now, a slightly different way of doing it is called the division algorithm. The division algorithm is simply a way of writing it that's a little bit different but very easy to understand. Basically, if we go to this above thing and we divide everything by the divisor, so we get our number divided by the divisor. Now, why is this important? Because remember, this was the original question, 10 divided by 4, 15 divided by 6. This is the original question, and that equals the quotient. Why? Because if we divide everything by the divisor, divisor times quotient divided by the divisor leaves us with just the quotient, plus the remainder divided by the divisor. So the division, the division algorithm is leaving a final answer as, for example, 15 divided by 6 is equal to the quotient 2 plus a remainder of 3 divided by 6. That was our divisor. So our divisor was 6 here, and our divisor is 6 here. And that should make complete sense because 3, 6 is 1 half, 2 plus 1 half is 2 and a half, or 2.5, and 15 divided by 6 is 2 and a half. Here's another one. 10 divided by 4 is the quotient of 2 plus a remainder of 2 divided by the divisor of 4. One once again, we also get 2 half, or 2 plus a half, which is 2 and a half. So this is using, again, what's called the, divide, the division algorithm. Here's one more, 22 divided by 3. 22, 3 goes into 22 seven times. That's my quotient, plus a remainder of 1. 7 times 3 is 21. That leaves us the remainder of 1. Divided by 3 is 1 third. So 22 over 7 is 7 plus a third, or 7 and 1 third, 7.3 repeating. So when it comes to doing polynomials, it's the exact same thing. A function divided by another function, we'll use d to represent the divisor. That way you remember it's the divisor. So a function divided by a divisor is equal to the quotient q of x plus the remainder r of x divided by the divisor. So again, this is using the division algorithm, and this is how we'd like to give our final answer. Now, ultimately the goal is to get a factor, which means that you have a remainder of 0. So the end goal is what we would prefer to happen is that this remainder right here becomes zero and that whole back part is, well, blank, I guess. So let's look at it. several examples for the rest of today in this video and hopefully every example will teach us a little something else. Okay, so we have this polynomial 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4 divided by x minus 2. So let's show how to use long division to solve this. So first off, we're going to make our division bar like we've always seen before. Inside the division bar goes the top value, 6x cubed minus 19x squared plus 16x minus 4. Now, it's important that there's a spot for every power th going down. So 3, 2, 1, and then no power. You need to make sure that spot is held. Now, it just so happens that every spot is filled here, but if one of those is skipped, you need to put a zero in its spot. We'll see that in another example. Outside over here is the divisor, x minus 2. 
So we start off by saying, okay, how many times does x go into 6x cubed? Well, to get an x to turn into a 6x cubed, you need to multiply it by 6x squared. So notice I put that in the column for, for the x squared column, and x times 6x squared is 6x cubed. Negative 2 times 6x squared is negative 12x squared. So notice everything's lining up in the proper column. So I did x times 6x squared and negative 2 times 6x squared. Now, just like in regular division, I am going to subtract. I like to circle my subtraction sign because I always forget to subtract, so it helps remind me. 6x cubed minus 6x cubed is 0. Negative 19 minus negative 12. Be careful because that second negative will turn to a positive, so that really becomes negative 19 plus 12 because the minus a negative, so that ends up being negative 7x squared. And then we're going to drop down the 16x and we're going to drop down the minus 4 and start the whole process over again. How do I turn an x into a negative 7x squared? I need a negative 7x. x times negative 7x is negative 7x squared. Negative 2 times negative 7x is positive 14x, and I'm going to again subtract again. Negative 7 minus negative 7 is negative 7 plus 7, which is 0. 16 minus 14 is 2x, and then drop down the minus 4. Almost done. How do I turn an x into a 2x? Multiply it by positive 2. x times 2x is 2x. Negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And I get, again, subtraction. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 4 minus negative 4 is 0. And I have a remainder of 0. So my final answer is the original problem is equal to the quotient 6x squared minus 7x plus 2 plus the remainder of 0 over my divisor of x minus 2. Now, ultimately, I don't need this back part because we all know 0 divided by anything is 0. So we found out that once we divided, we got this nice quotient of 6x squared minus 7x plus 2. All right, let's check out another one here. Okay, so one more time, I'm going to set up my um, division bar. Inside is going to go x squared plus 3x plus 5. Notice that I did have a 2, a second power, a first power, and a no power, so every power was covered. On the outside is going to go my x plus 1. All right, how do I turn x into an x squared? Multiply it by x. x times x squared is, or x times x is x squared. 1 times x is 1x. And I'm now going to subtract. So um, x squared minus x squared is 0. 3x minus 1x is 2x. Drop down the 5. How do I turn an x into a 2x? I'm going to multiply by 2. So x times 2 is 2x. 1 times 2 is 2. And then I'm going to subtract again. 2x minus 2x is 0. 5 minus 2 is 3. Now, at this point, 3 is my remainder because x cannot be made into a 3. There's no way you could turn x into a 3. So I have my final answer is the original problem is equal to the quotient x plus 2 plus my remainder of 3 over my divisor of x plus 1. So this right here would be my final answer for what the original problem right here was asked. So that's using the division algorithm. So that was a pretty easy one. All right, let's check out another one. This one's going to have a slight little hiccup in it. So let's see here. First off, I'm going to make my division bar. Inside, I'm going to put x cubed. Now, because I didn't have any x squareds, I need to put a 0x squared in that spot. i got to have every power covered. There's also no x's, so I'm going to put a 0x in its spot. And then finally, the take that back. That should be a minus 1. I almost put a plus 1 there. So minus 1. On the outside, is going to go to my divisor, x minus 1. And then I'm going to start this whole process. How do I turn an x into an x cubed? Multiplied by x squared. x times x squared is x cubed. Negative 1 times x squared is negative 1 x squared. See, so I wouldn't have had anywhere to put that x squared if I didn't have that column for x squared filled in. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. 0 x squared minus negative 1 x squared makes positive 1 x squared plus 0x minus 1. How do I turn an x into an 1x squared? Multiply it by x. x times x is x squared. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Subtract again. 1x squared minus x squared is 0. 0x minus negative x is going to turn into a positive x. You could put a 1 in front of that if you want to. You don't have to. Lastly, how do I turn an x into an x? Well, multiply by 1. x times 1 is x. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And I, once again, get a remainder of 0. Because when I subtract all this, I get 0. Getting a remainder of 0 is an awesome thing because that tells you that your divisor, x minus 1, is a factor, which is going to be really important for what we're coming to learn here soon. So x squared plus x plus 1 plus a remainder 
factor of zero over my divisor. Obviously, this back part is not necessarily needed because it's going to be zero. Okay, let's try another one here. This one actually looks like, oh, it's going to be really ugly and tough, but because of the way it's set up, it actually ends up being really pretty short. So once again, my division bar, sorry, it's not so straight there, so 2x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus 5x squared plus 3x minus 2. On the outside, I'm going to go x squared plus 2x minus 3. And I'm going to start the process here. Okay, how do I turn x squared into an x to the fourth? I need to multiply by 2x squared. Once again, notice that went into the x squared column. That way, x squared times 2x squared is 2x to the fourth. 2x times 2x squared is 4x cubed. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x squared. Everybody's got to be covered, and as long as you distribute and multiply, that will happen. 2 minus 2 is 0. 4 minus 4 is also 0. But be careful, once again here, negative 5 minus negative 6 actually could turn into a positive 6. So negative 5 plus 6 is 1x squared plus 3x minus 2. How do I turn an x squared into an x squared? Multiply by 1. Notice I'm going to put that 1 here. I'm going to leave a spot here. I mean, there's really nothing. Well, I shouldn't put an x there. There is nothing there because I skipped over that column, and that happens. That's all right. So x squared times 1 is x squared. Uh, 2x times 1 is 2x. And negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. And now I'm going to go ahead and subtract. 1 minus 1 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1x. Negative 2 minus negative 3. Be careful again. A double negative will make that a plus 1. At this point, an x squared cannot be reduced to an x. I cannot make it any smaller. So here's my remainder. So my final answer is the quotient 2x squared plus 1 plus my remainder of x plus 1 divided by my divisor, x squared plus 2x minus 3. So there's my final answer, quotient plus remainder over divisor. Okay, so that's it for long division. Hopefully that was very, very simple and not too painful. Next up is synthetic division. As I'm looking at that now, I think I forgot an N in the word synthetic. Anyway, I'll throw that N in there. Okay, synthetic division is much, much, much faster. Most kids that love synthetic division. It'll take those long division problems and get them done a lot faster, but it only works if your divisor is linear. So I'm going to put a big star there. It only works if your divisor is linear, meaning your divisor has a degree of 1. It's not going to work in any other scenario. So here's the problem. You're going to be given a function divided by a divisor. First off, you're going to list all of the coefficients of the function on top. Just the coefficients. You just need the numbers, but you got to be careful that every single power is covered. So if a power skipped, you got to put a zero there. Um, in its place. On the outside here goes the zero of the divisor, the zero from the divisor. So whatever number makes the divisor zero, that's going to be the number that goes on the outside. A lot of kids mess that up. Then from there, synthetic division is all about multiplication and adding, multiplication and adding. So we're going to show you how to do that once we look at some examples. It's actually really hard to kind of describe in terms of a formula. You just have to kind of see some examples and follow it. So here's our first example, x fourth to the fourth minus 10x squared minus 2x plus 4, all divided by x plus 3. Synthetic division can be used because my divisor is a linear function of degree 1. So I'm going to make an upside down division bar, and I'm going to put all of my coefficients. 1, now notice there's no cubes, so I'm going to put a 0 for the cubes, negative 10 for the x squared, negative 2 for the x, and 4 for the plain old constants. So I got 4th degree, 3rd degree, 2nd degree, 1 degree, no degree. Okay, got to have them all covered, so make sure you fill in that spot for 0. Now down here, or outside, it goes negative 3. That's the 0 from the divisor. The number that makes the bottom 0 is what goes on the outside. Drop down the 1, that's first. Just drop that 1 straight down. Then you multiply. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Now we add our columns. 0 plus negative 3 is negative 3. Then we multiply. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. And then add your columns. Negative 1. Multiply. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. Add your columns positive 1. Multiply negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Add your columns, we get a 1. The last number is always your remainder when you get to the very, very end. So it's just a matter of dropping down, multiplying, adding, multiplying, adding. Add the columns, multiply to get to the next column. Now, I started with a fourth degree. This problem is originally fourth degree, and by dividing out a linear function, x plus 3, what I did is I reduced it to a cube. So this is a 1x cubed. 
This is a negative 3x squared, a negative 1x, and a positive 1 constant. And then my remainder, that's a really ugly remainder I wrote there, but my remainder is 1. That's this last number. I always circle it, start, remainder is 1. So once again, how do I know I became a cubic? Because I started with a fourth degree, I dropped it by one linear function, and that takes me down to a cubic. So that's 1x cubed, negative 3x squared, minus 1x plus 1. So my division algorithm gives me my quotient of 1x cubed, minus 3x squared, minus 1x plus 1 plus my remainder of 1 over my divisor of x plus 3. Quotient is this guy right here, plus the remainder of 1 divided by my divisor. That's using the division algorithm. So hopefully synthetic division A should look familiar, and hopefully it was pretty easy. All right, now real quick, the factor theorem. The factor theorem is really important. The factor theorem tells us that a polynomial function, f of x, it's got to be a polynomial, has a factor x minus k if and only if k is also a 0. And I kind of told you that earlier. If you are a factor, you are a 0 automatically. So this basically tells us that the remainder must be 0. If your remainder is 0, then that means you are a factor, because x minus k is a factor if and only if plugging k into the function results in 0, meaning x minus k is also a 0. That's kind of old news, but it's important to understand that that's important now, because it tells us the remainder must be 0 in order to be considered a factor. All right, so show that x minus radical 3 is a factor of this cubic function. Well, to do that, I'm going to use synthetic division. Basically, I want to divide by, I want to take my function, and I want to divide it by x minus radical 3. If I divide and get a remainder of 0, I have proven that I have a factor. So let's show this real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and make my synthetic division 1 for the x cubed, 2 for the x squared, negative 3 for the x, negative 6 for the plenal numbers, third degree, second degree, first degree, no degree. And on the outside goes the 0 that I'm considering. So if x minus radical 3 is a factor, the 0 is positive radical 3. Now, this is going to get a little bit ugly, but everything will work out in the end. Remember, I'm looking to get a remainder of 0. So go nice and slow here and show your work. Drop down the 1. That's easy. Radical 3 times 1 is radical 3. So far, so good. When I add the column, though, I can't add 2 in radical 3, so I'm just going to have to write down 2 plus radical 3. That's all I could do. You cannot say 5. 2, and that's, that's not a 3. That's a radical 3. Now I'm going to multiply, and unfortunately, I've got to do a little bit of dirty work over here to figure out what is radical 3 times 2 plus radical 3. Well, radical 3 times 2 is 2 radical 3. Nothing I can do there. Radical 3 times radical 3 is just plain old 3. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to write 3 plus 2 radical 3. Again, we like to put the 3 in the front. That's all. Anyway, now I'm going to add. When I add, I can add the negative 3 and 3. Those are plain old numbers, so they can add and get 0. So I get 2 radical 3, because the 3 and the negative 3 canceled out. Once again, I'm going to do some dirty work. I have to multiply radical 3 times 2 radical 3. Well, that's going to be 2 radical 9. Well, 2 radical 9 is 2 times 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. So I get a 6 left over, and that column adds up to 0, and that's awesome news. That means my remainder was 0, hence proving that x minus radical 3 was a factor. But something extra special happens here. We learned in class that these square root zeros always come in pairs. So if x minus radical 3 is a 0 or a factor, we automatically know that x plus radical 3 is another factor or another 0 of negative radical 3. So I could actually continue and do synthetic division again with what was left over, but this time with negative radical 3, once again because I know that these guys always come in pairs. Now watch how easy and quick this will work. Drop down the 1. Negative radical 3 times 1 is negative radical 3. When I add these, the radical 3's cancel, and I just get 2, which is beautiful news. No square roots. Then I multiply negative radical 3 times 2, and I get negative 2 radical 3. And once again, those cancel. 2 radical 3 and a negative 2 radical 3 cancel out and make 0. So once again, I got another remainder of 0, hence proving that these are both factors, and they are both zeros, which is really, really good news. So I had a cubic. I broke it down to a quadratic, and then I broke it down to linear, because I took two factors away. So if you have a cubic, and you take two factors away, you become linear. So this means that this 1 and 2 represents x plus 2, or 1x plus 2. So that means my final factors are 1x plus 2, 
and then don't forget the factors you were we were known from we kind of knew from the beginning x minus radical three and whoop I miswrote that uh, x plus radical three. So it's kind of a cool way to check and see that you have factors and then also be able to understand that these square roots always come in pairs. So we see how we can continue that synthetic division. Okay, so pretty neat, I think, there. Pretty easy to understand. All right, here's another one. Show that x minus 2 and x plus 3 are both factors of 2x to the 4th plus 7x cubed minus 4x squared minus 27x minus 18. So I'm going to show that they're both factors. So once again, I'm going to start off here with my division, my upside down division bar. Put in my leading coefficients, 2, 7, negative 4, negative 27, and negative 18. Make sure you don't forget any, fourth degree, third degree, second degree, first degree, no degree. And let's see, it doesn't matter which one I start off with. Let's start off with the x minus 2. If x minus 2 is a 0, or is a factor, then 2 is the 0, because 2 minus 2 is 0. All right, if I'm correct, I will get a beautiful, gorgeous 0 at the very end. Let's see, drop down the 2, I get 2. 2 times 2 is 4, add, I get 11. Multiply, you get 22. Add, you get negative 18. 2 times negative 18 is negative 37. And uh, negative, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I knew I made a mistake. Something didn't look right there. Positive 18, negative 4 plus 22 is positive 18. 2 times 18 is 36. Negative 27 plus 36 is 9. 2 times 9 is 18, and of course, I got that 0. That is awesome news, hence proving that x minus 2 is a 0, is a factor. All right, but I think there's another factor, so I'm actually going to just carry on with my synthetic division using what's what left over. This time, I'm going to use negative 3, because negative 3 is my other factor, my other 0. So drop down the 2, negative 6. Add that, I get 5. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. Add that, I get 3. Multiply, I get negative 9. And once again, as we knew what happened, I got another remainder of 0. Fantastic news. So let's see what happened here. I had a fourth degree, but I reduced it by two factors. So that took me down to a cubic and then now to a square. So I'm at 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Now, Remember, this is a fourth degree, so I have four zeros. Well, I knew I had two of them. Uh, x minus 2 was a zero, or a factor, excuse me, meaning 2 was the zero. x plus 3 is a factor, so negative 3 was the zero. And now I'm left with this quadratic, and this quadratic should be factorable. Let's just check it out. Um, if it's not factorable, we'll have to use a quadratic formula, but it should be factorable. 2x times x to make a three, uh, 2x squared. Let's see here, I need a 1 and a 3. Let's see if this is going to work. Let's see, it's going to give me a 6x on the outside, a 1x on the inside, and a 6x and a 1x, uh-oh, a 6x and a 1x will make 7x. Well, that's not going to work out, even though it looked like it would. Let's try switching that around real quick. 3 and 1. Now I'm going to get a 2x on the outside, a 3x on the inside. That will add up to the 5x in the middle. So a little trial and error there sometimes. So 2x plus 3 times x plus 1 is another set of factors. So lo and behold, this ugly um, fourth degree polynomial has four factors, x minus 2 and x plus 3, which I used synthetic division to confirm that they were zeros. Then what I was left with was a quadratic, 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, which I was able to factor that just using our factoring skills. And I got two more factors, which would create two more zeros of x equals negative 3 halves and x equals negative 1. So that was a very short and hopefully very easy video. If I went fast, just pause and take your time going through it. But I was basically showing you guys how to use long division and then how to use synthetic division to find the division algorithm and then also determine if you have factors or not. And factors are all about getting remainders of zero, which sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. If we go back to the original synthetic division problem we did here. In this problem right here, we ended up with a remainder of 1, which means that x plus 3 right here was not a f um, factor. 
Um, so I tried dividing it out, but unfortunately, because it didn't go into it with the remainder of 0, x plus 3 was, was not a factor, which means that negative 3 is not a 0. Because to be a 0, you must get a remainder of 0. And that's what the remainder theorem tells us, or the factor theorem, basically, that to, ha to be a remainder of 0 means that you're a factor. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll do a bunch of examples in class, and have a great day.